welcome back again to this School of Airway. Uh, again, Dr. Torres. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the issue about using paralytics or not. Now, I'm comfortable in using paralytics because I was raised to use paralytics. And the majority of the time, they're probably very necessary along with induction. There are some that believe you don't even need to induce people, you just need to paralyze them. I don't think that's humane. I think people would be remembering what's going on, freaking out, if they were just paralyzed while they were awake. So I do think it's humane to induce. I don't believe one drug is the safest drug. I think there are uh, different scenarios to use midazolam or propofol for seizures, or a patient with increased ICP from a head bleed, um, vitamidate. It does drop blood pressure despite the myths. Ketamine is probably a great drug for induction. But by itself, I don't think it allows me maximum uh, relaxation uh, of the patient's airway. It doesn't allow me to uh, ease in getting the tube in. Cords opening and closing does not help my uh, efforts. Um, now, there is a small chance that the patient will not be baggable with the BVM if I paralyze them. There is some tonicity in the muscles when you are just induced in sleeping, and maybe the patient has obstructive sleep apnea, never diagnosed, or morbidly obese, fat and obese neck, and everything's going to collapse and make it very hard to see um, after I paralyze them. That's the chance I take, but I was raised to use paralytics, and maybe because the ER doctors were rubbing off the anesthesiologists who came down and used paralytics, and they used the paralytics for patients with full stomachs. Almost all of my patients come with full stomachs. But I know that if I paralyze someone and I can't intubate them, I need to have my rescue devices for bagging, like a BVM with PEEP. That's not, that's, if that's not successful, something that looks like a combat tube or a, or a King LT, or are you something that looks like an LMA? If that doesn't work, at the end, I will cut with a cry kit. I need to be ready for those things. I will not narrow myself to not using paralytics for the fear that I can't bag them. But that's how I was raised. In other cultures, in other parts of the hospital, sometimes in ICUs, they're not raised by an anesthesiologist. They have no backup. Their backup may be a surgeon who may not be immediately available. And I can understand their fear, but I do think there's alternatives. You can't intubate them after they've been sedated only. You should consider giving paralysis, throwing in an intubating LMA, and using a bronchoscope and intubating through that. That's an alternative, okay? But I know that if I paralyze, I may have to cut. All right? So it depends on your race. Tarzan was raised with apes, and he learned how to speak ape. And acted like an ape. But he also was Lord Greystroke. So he knew how to act like a civilized man. He knew English. He recognized Jane. He recognized what a nape did not look like. All right, Wolverine was raised with wolves. And sometimes he is a beast. So it depends how you're raised and how you're trained. I'm comfortable with using paralytics. But I have backups. I do understand that not all patients need paralysis, and some I've actually used KSI, K means sequence induction only. But those cases are rare. Those are patients who cannot tolerate any apnea. They will desat real fast, and it's almost like an awake intubation, but not really awake intubation because I gave them a push of ketamine. But and some people are true awake arrests in that <laughs> no medicine is given, but they're near death or cardiac arrest. And no paralytics are given. So awake intubations, I haven't done that often. The closest thing is just getting ketamine only with no paralysis. And I got the tube in. I'm not lucky. I just trained myself to be good. Thank you. Happy holidays. Happy Festivus.